context of organization. So there are a couple of things that the ISO 27001 standard expects us to know uh, and to have reviewed in terms of informing our information security management system and our GRC, our governance risk and compliance, and they make sense. So one of the ways that we can do that is to document them and we document those within the context of organization. What we're going to be looking at here are the internal issues that could impact the ISMS information security management system, the external issues that could impact the information security management system and any interested parties that may have an interest uh, in defining what it is that they expect from us. So as with everything, you've got the standard document markup, which we covered in a previous video. What we're going to look at uh, and record are external issues and uh, internal issues. So starting with internal issues, it's necessary to understand our own internal context. And what we're looking at here is things that could inform that information security management system. Now we pre-populated this, but the kind of things that we're looking at is uh, roles, accountabilities, policies, objectives, and the things that can impact that typically are things around people, time, organizational structure, etc. And what we've done is provided some guidance around that. So if we look at people, again, typically what we would see within an implementation is that internally there are no resources trained or experienced in the delivery of 27001. So what we're trying to do is to, to highlight that, uh, to record that and then decide whether or not we're going to put a risk management um, in place around that, whether we're going to add it to the risk register and put risk management in place. Now, none of these are set in stone. You can delete and remove any of these. You can add to any of these. You can change any of the wordings on these. But again, this is just a basic set, set out. So if you were to agree with this one, you just turn that text to black uh, and you would add it to the risk register or check the risk register we've already provided uh, to see whether or not it already exists on there. Things that can impact it again, time. So the implementation uh, can take time that we don't have. So we can highlight that and that we've understood that and we've addressed that. The organization itself might not support an information security management system clearly uh, currently. Uh, so again, we'd call that out. And we can do things around technology, governance. There may be things around key stakeholders that we need to record. The key here is just to, to have evidence is that we've reviewed what those issues uh, may be and then we've indicated yes or no to whether or not we're going to manage them through risk. External issues, again, they're going to be relevant really to the timing uh, and the location of it. Legislative changes. So at the time of writing, you know, Brexit uh, has actually happened, um, but we, we could consider that. So external issues such as Brexit could have impacted the data protection law that could have impacted on information security, governance, risk and compliance, you know, trading within the EU, protection over data, etc. So we're going to record those external issues and again, whether or not we're going to manage those through risk. We can look at things like advances in technology if we're in a technological industry, uh, economic, uh, the climate, uh, again, at the time of uh, recording, we're going through a pandemic um, with furlough, so there could be things that are impacting us there. And um, we can look at competition, etc. So we would record those, either setting the text to black, deleting them, adding them in, but we're recording those internal and external issues as required by 27001. And then we're going to record the interested parties. So this is almost like a stakeholder analysis, really, I think you'd call it. But who are the third parties that are interested in our information security management system and what is it that they're interested in? So again, based on experiences, things like group ownership, funding entities, if you're in that world, you know, you're going to have an executive board, shareholders and employees. So we can understand what their requirements are going to be some standard wording around those. The Information Commissioner's Office and regulators are absolutely interested parties, uh, your insurers. Again, taking into consideration things like local residents, if you are having offices um, uh, or, or a local presence, your key suppliers and your key customers. Now, you don't have to record those here, here but they are going to be um, interested parties and we are going to record them on a third party supplier register but it can be useful uh, to call them out here. Now if you think you're going to share this document externally uh, or widely or publicly then maybe you don't want to do that for commercial reasons uh, so that's why it's in red but if it's of use to you then you would record that here. One of the things that is important as well is to record is well, auditors. 
if you are going to go through a certification audit, auditors like to see themselves as being interested parties and recorded within within this register. So you would add in your auditors, um, and you know they would want to see that you're meeting the standard, that you're complying with the standard, that evidences are in place around the standard. So this document provides you with a contextual overview that now leads us to understand what things are impacting our information security management system in terms of issues, interested parties, and what it is that they need to see.